Hello everyone and welcome to episode 16 of the Kairo Khan vs Everything speedrun. In this series we play the Kairo Khan setup as both the black and the white pieces regardless of what my opponent plays in a 15 minute plus 10 second rapid game. Trying to see how high we can take this account, I'll try and explain my thought process while I play my moves and then we can go a bit more in depth in the post game analysis. Hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, so we have the white pieces against I am Goonie from Japan. So I just had to double check. So of course, we're going to start with C3. And my opponent goes knight C6. So of course, we're going to go D4. And I'm expecting the move E5. No, OK. See, this is odd. This is odd because I've explained this in previous episodes. If you want to check out the previous episodes, then the playlist will be linked below. The knight on c6 against this kind of setup, and in many queen's pawn opening games, the knight is misplaced. Because the only way this knight makes any sense is if black can play e5, right? Because he controls that square. If black could try to play e5 on this move, I could have taken, or I could have just pushed d5 to kick the knight away, and after something like knight e7, e4, and white is comfortably in the driver's seat. So after black goes d5, I play knight f3 to control the e5 square and disallow him from going e5. He may play bishop g4 to try and remove my knight. And I could go bishop f4, but that would be quite a London-y setup. He goes for h6, trying to stop anything from coming to uh, g5. And so the issue is, this knight is not a good piece because black needs to be defending this d5 pawn with... The pawn on c6, and he obviously can't do that with a knight on c6, or he needs to be going after my d4 pawn by playing c5. Of course, he can't play c5 because his knight is on c6. His knight, what squares is he controlling? Uh, yeah, that is the right grammar. <laughs> He's controlling nothing useful because we occupy these forward movement squares. And if he comes to a5, uh, I mean, where's he going? Like b3, c4, really? So. This is a misplaced knight, and we're going to try and take advantage of it. Through previous episodes of the speedrun, I've realized that the idea of putting the queen on b3 is quite powerful against knight c6. When the bishop develops, the b7 pawn can be weak, and the d5 pawn can be weak. So it's worth bearing in mind. Okay, so, of course we could play bishop f4, but, eh, I don't know, it's a London. So I'm more tempted to go e3, followed by bishop d3 in castles. We could, of course, go for knight d3. Sorry, knight d2. This would be more of a collie setup. And not going to lie, I've been enjoying the collie quite a lot recently. It's very interesting. It's basically a London, except you don't put the bishop on f4. So you don't feel like quite as much of a scumbag. Queen b3 is a valid move. But knight d2, I think, well, knight bd2, of course. We're not putting this knight on d2. Um, it's, it's never a bad move because we are also potentially preparing the move e4 in one go. If we can do that in one move, then we're probably saving ourselves a lot of time in the future. Now, knight f6 would, of course, stop us from playing e4 in one move because black would have two attackers to our one defender. And if knight f6, then probably just e3, followed by bishop d3 with the pawn triangle defending the bishop and then castling. Again, this is similar to the London, but because we're not putting the bishop on f4, I believe it's more of a Karo Khan type setup and therefore more useful for understanding how to play Karo Khan positions. Okay, so yeah, I think e3 is perfectly valid. We could go h3. Um, to stop the bishop from coming to g4. But if you go e3, bishop g4, I'll probably just play queen b3 to break the pin and put pressure on some of the weak light squares in the black position. Although if e3, bishop g4, queen b3, knight a5, attacking my queen and defending b7... Um, what do we do there? If we give a check on a4, then he just goes c6. And his queen defends his knight. But if you go c6, we could maybe play knight to e5. And claim that this knight is out of the game. 
Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's go e3. Of course, we don't even have to go queen b3 if he goes bishop to g4. I think throwing in the move h3 first would probably be a good idea. Uh, and if the bishop retreats, then cool. And if the bishop takes, then we probably take with the queen. So I'm just thinking of bishop g4, h3 takes. And you might be tempted to take with the knight, but I think taking with the queen... Ah, but then he can go e5. No. So the reason I wanted to take with the queen was to provide more support for the e4 push. But the issue with taking with the queen is that we take our eyes off of e5. So we should probably take with the knight so that we stop my opponent from going for the e5 break, which I think is probably more important than playing e4 ourselves at this current moment in time. Because, because we're going to build up the e4 push anyway with moves like bishop d3, castles, rook e1, maybe queen c2, maybe queen e2. And we're going to get a bunch of support for it in the future regardless, especially if my opponent trades off his light squared bishop for my knight because then he can't put the bishop on f5 to control the e4 square. Again, very, very interesting opening play. Um, of course, putting the bishop on f4 earlier in the game, uh, I think instead of playing knight bd2, bishop f4 was definitely a better move. Because e5 becomes incredibly difficult to play, my opponent goes e5. What? I don't understand. Okay, maybe his thought process is knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, and knight to g4 attacking the pawn. But we can just go knight f3. And it's something like queen e7. Queen d4. Okay, what if we take with the pawn? Because I think I prefer taking with the pawn. Because then his knight remains misplaced on c6. Knight g4. He has two attackers, bishop to b5, pinning the knight. That looks good to me. And then we just accelerate our development. Yeah, I don't understand this. He doesn't have time to play a move like bishop g4 because we're going to take his knight. I'm not sure why he's done this. Yeah, I think bishop b5 is just very good. We pin the knight. My opponent could play a move like queen e7 to still go after the pawn. But then d5 is loose. d5 is loose. We could also maybe play a move like queen a4 to gang up on the knight. And prepare to transfer our queen to a square like f4 or d4 to defend the pawn. Okay, bishop d7 breaks the pin. Uh, that's an interesting move. Because I don't know if I want to take... Because then our light squares are quite weak. Because we do have a bunch of pawns on dark squares. So trading our light square bishop off would typically not be a good idea. Maybe I should have taken with the knight rather than the pawn. Because if we'd have taken with the knight. Knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, knight g4. Then we could play knight to f3 opening our queen up. To help with the attack on d5 and potentially come to d4 to help defend. But then he would have moves like c5 anyway. So that wouldn't even be that good. Maybe he's going to win this pawn back. And maybe there's nothing we can do about it. Hmm. Can we play queen b3? To go after d5? If queen b3, knight takes, knight takes, knight takes, queen d5, bishop takes, bishop, sorry, bishop takes, queen takes, knight d7, that looks pretty good to me. Queen b3 also puts pressure on b7 potentially. I don't see how he defends d5 because like I said, queen b3 when the knight goes to c6 is a very common idea which I learned in a previous episode. This is, this is why I think this series is incredibly useful, by the way. Because not only are hopefully you learning, but I'm also learning because I know to watch out for Queen B3 in these positions. Queen B3, what else can he do? How else can he defend D5? Because if he goes for a move like Bishop E6, then he's wasting a move and his knight is pinned.
Okay, Queen B3. What does he do? If if he takes he takes He can't take because then I take with check and then C6 and then we take on B7. Yeah, this looks really good. This looks really, really good. I don't know whether like black might have a way out here, but I'm not sure how he gets out of this position on equal material. Because yes, he's probably going to win e5, but at what cost? Because d5 is weak and b7 is very weak, right? The difference in our pawn structure is that look at these dark squared pawns. They're so stable. Um. Okay, so I kind of thought he would take with this knight to open this up. But we could just take on d5. Uh, uh, it should be six. Oh, then we just trade and then we take, and the knight can't take back because of the pin. Uh, we could, of course, do it like this: knight takes, knight takes, queen takes. But I think I prefer taking with the queen first because if he takes here, then we can take with the knight and we just get free development. Free development, and then I mean our bishop's not great, but we are up a pawn, clean pawn. Yeah, let's do it. Queen d5. And the knight can't move to any good square because one, we can take the knight on e5, but two, we can take on d7 with check. So we're never at any risk here. Okay, he takes. I mean, we could take with the queen, but I don't see why we wouldn't take with the knight. Put the knight on a better square. And. This, I mean, we just stop a clean pawn now. Okay, bishop d6. It's a nice square for sure. The only issue is where do we put this bishop? We could castle and prepare something like rook d1. When he castles, then we might have some issues with our bishop and queen because we're not going to be able to do some kind of taking with check. It will no longer come with check. What about queen e4 check here? That's interesting. That looks really good. Because if he blocks with the knight, then we can take and then take. Right? Or we can maybe just take immediately. If he blocks with the bishop, then we can take. If he blocks with the queen then we can trade queens and remember we are up a pawn and uh, we have no weaknesses because we haven't committed our pawns to stupid squares they're just sitting back nicely and yes our bishop isn't amazing i know but if we're just up a pawn in a in an end game that's not going to be that difficult to play we have an active bishop an active knight our rook's going to go to the d file that looks very nice. We just have to figure out a home for this bishop. We can maybe go b3, bishop b2, and then play something like c4 in the future to get the bishop nice and active. Or we can maybe try e4, bishop e3, but then the e4 pawn might be a bit loose. So maybe if we want to play that plan, we might want to move the knight and then go f3 to support the e4 pawn. But that's kind of long-winded. And if he blocks with this bishop, then that's just very passive, right? And we also get the d file... Um, a bit more open so we can pin the light squared bishop to his queen, which in conjunction with this pressure could be quite useful. Bishop e7 is a major concession, and he plays it. He plays a major concession, I think. Knight to e5 is definitely a move here. Again, just to try and facilitate trades. Hmm, I don't know if it's necessary, though. We could go knight d4. And if knight d4, bishop d7, queen d7, and then e d4 to make sure my bishop can come to f4, that looks pretty nice. The difference with knight e5 is that after knight e5, we can't take because then he'll take with the knight. So knight d4. If takes, 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 we could take, like, sorry. If knight d4 takes, takes, 
take. So we could take with the queen to ask for a queen trade, but he's not going to allow it. He's going to play a move like queen f5, which is kind of invasive. And it also means my bishop is going to struggle to develop. Maybe we could take on g7. I don't know. I don't know whether castling and just going for rook d1 is better. Let's say we castle. He's probably going to castle. Rook to d1. That doesn't look very fun. <laughs> Quite simply. We also have ideas of bishop d3 to go after h7. And that is pretty good. That was very good. Sorry about that. I just had to go answer the door. So we have lost more time. <laughs> but yeah, knight e4 might be simple. But I think castling is probably better. Because we still have a ton of pressure. These ideas still exist. And rook d1 is coming. I feel like we can always play a move like this. Because how does, how does black reduce the pressure? Right? If he does something like a6, bishop to a4, if he goes b5, probably bishop to c2. Okay, he doesn't. And the problem is that we set up this battery, is the point. Okay, rook d1 looks amazing. We do have to be a little bit careful, though, because... He may be threatening back ranks with move, moves like bishop to f5. And the rook is undefended. We do have bishop f1 in those cases. Rook d1, bishop f5. Rook d8, bishop e4. No, I don't like that. I don't like that. So, okay. What about... We could start with bishop d3, but I eh, don't know. We could go bishop a4 to protect the rook on d1 when we put a rook on d1. This bishop, this bishop is a bit of an issue, I will admit. I will admit it's not great. Again, we could go knight d4. But then it doesn't work because we don't take on d7 with check. So that's not perfect. We could go b3 to prepare bishop b2 and then go rook d1, but it's a bit late. It, like it is, it's a bit slow. A bit slow. Um, we could go knight e five. And after takes takes, I think he's moves like bishop f six, and it's difficult to keep defending my bishop. Yeah, that's. We'd have to do some maneuver like this, which might be fine, but nah, I don't love it. Don't love it. Yeah, this bishop isn't great. It really isn't. This is why e4 is the main idea of the collie. So the bishop can get out later. Hmm. Bishop a4 does look good. Just preparing rook d1. And what, is, what does black do? Bishop a4, rook e8, rook d1. We don't really have a threat though. Because he can put the bishop back on d6. So, eh. We could go bishop d3. Which would force my opponent to either go f5. And then we can put the bishop on c4 with check. Or, go g6. Which is weakening. Which is weakening. And then maybe we can play queen c4 to threaten bishop g6, because we'd pin the pawn. But then he can go bishop e6, so maybe not. But bishop d3, we can drop it back to c2. Move our queen, prepare e4. Then the bishop would also help with e4. That looks good. That looks good. e7 is also still weak. Yeah, I think I like this move. Because black is going to have to create a weakness now. He has to create a weakness. Yeah, f5, okay. Is that the lesser of the two evils? We'll find out. Do we want to go bishop c4, or do we want to go queen c4? Tough choice. Tough choice. 
could also go queen to d5. Put pressure like this. Queen d5, king h8. What's the next move though? Bishop c2? The bishop's probably coming to f6, which is worth mentioning. I like the bishop on c2, I think, but if bishop c4, king h8, where do we want to put the queen? That's the issue. Maybe the queen goes to c2. Maybe the queen goes to c2. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I think I just need to make a move at this point. Maybe knight a5 is annoying going after the bishop. If king h8, we could play queen d5. Is an option. Queen d5 isn't bad. I think I like it. I think I like it. I know we're not threatening anything. That's not the point. The point is just to get the queen on the D file, keep control of this diagonal to target B7. And we also stop knight A5 because we control that square. And it's difficult to kick the queen out because moves like knight B4 don't work. You can't go knight E7. You can't go bishop to E6. And rook D1 is our natural follow-up here. Again, the issue is this bishop. E4 is harder to play now because of f5 controlling the e4 square but i think it might like we could play a move like rook d1 and then bishop d2 bishop e1 maybe it's a passive piece but it's not the end of the world if we can connect our rooks together then it won't be as big of an issue queen e8 is a good move uh if rook d1 rook d8 But he has no frets. Uh, we can't go bishop e6. Rook d1, rook d8, bishop d2. Bishop c8. Queen b5. That looks decent. That looks decent. Let's do that. I am low on time as well, so, you know, I need to make some decisions. Uh, yeah, bishop d2 looks pretty good. Because we're preparing bishop to e1. And he has no useful discoveries. Although if bishop d2, he could play a move like rook f6 to prepare bishop to e6. Bishop d2, rook f6. Hmm. Queen b5. No. No, that doesn't work. A queen is a bit vulnerable. Maybe knight d4 is good. If knight d4. No. Oh, I'm running out of time. This is not good. I'm going to go bishop d2. My queen is actually not in the best of shapes right now. I think rook, d rook f6 could be an issue. But I've wasted so much time. So much time. As as always. Really stupid. Really stupid. Okay, bishop d6 isn't scary at all. That is not a concern. So let's go bishop to e1. The bishop isn't amazing, I know. But it does defend f2, which could be useful. Uh, if f4, if f4, f4 is played, we're going to go e4, I think. The queen needs to try and get out of here. Mm, he can't go bishop e6 though, which is good. We might drop the queen back to 
d3 or d2 and maybe put her on e2 or c2. Okay, what about bishop to e2 here? He's lining up on h2. I'm going to go bishop to e2. Gives our queen out a way out on b3 as well. The bishop isn't protected, I am aware. But for now, he can't get rid of this knight. Knight e5. Knight e5. His queen's under attack, so queen e2. And then we have knight g3, king h7. Knight f8, rook f8. And then we can just play a move like rook d2 to kick the queen out. Maybe. Still has pressure. Or, actually, if um, knight e5, knight e5, queen e2, knight g6, king h7, knight f8, rook f8, we have queen f3. And then if the queen goes to square like c4, then we no longer have threats on h2. So that's nice. And then maybe we can... Oh, g3 though, my bishop's so bad. My bishop is so bad. The K is threatening this to win our queen. Nice move. Um, queen c4 looks tempting. To defend the bishop. I didn't want to go to b5 because of a6. Can't drop back to d3 annoyingly because of this discovered check winning the queen. Although, if he are here, his queen would be under attack as well. But then he could just take the bishop. So, worth noting, however, worth noting, um, we're not threatening knight e5 because knight e5 bishop h5 and then knight c4 but maybe something like knight d4 attacking the queen oh but then we hang we hang mate okay so we can't do that we can't do that maybe we need to go g3 also makes f4 very difficult if g3 then knight d4 is more of an idea this is also worth considering To remove the possibility of mate. Like knight takes rook takes. Knight d4. But then just something like queen e8. And black is fine. Black's just winning. Uh, we are still up a pawn. So okay. That's a weird move. Can we not do this now? I think we can. Because knight takes... Knight and knight takes queen is no longer an idea, and we block this diagonal with the knight on e5. That's the important part. Bishop e5, of course, we just take the queen. We're also taking away the f7 and g6 square, so something like queen e8 might be the move. Then maybe f4 to try and glue the knight in. Looks a bit ugly. We can't play knight to f7 because the queen is defending f7. And if we move the knight back, then he just goes back. Okay, let's go f4. I have no idea if this is any good. We can put the bishop on g3 now, which is quite useful to try and help in the defense of the knight. He takes. Of course, we take back. If he wants to trade rooks, then go for it. We have ruined our structure a bit, but with low time, I was really worried about our king's safety. Knight g6 is maybe an issue. Going after the e5 pawn. Maybe I had to take first, put the queen on d8, so that the queen wouldn't target e5. Although c7 is hanging. Okay, he goes for it this way. Here, here. Uh. Um, Queen C 
five. I'm going to go queen c5 because I'm setting a trap of queen e5, queen f8. Um, he could go knight takes, of course. That's what I'm expecting. But I feel like I'm going to lose the pawn anyway. And then maybe we can just take on c7. Knight to g4. Take, take, here. Yeah, he can't do that. This is very interesting. We are still up a pawn for now. I'd love to play the move bishop c3 to line this up, but unfortunately I can't. Fortunate, unfortunately, I cannot. We may be going into an opposite colored bishop endgame, but it's not quite an endgame yet. Because we still have attacking opportunities. I think this might be a blunder because of bishop f2 and the queen's under attack so we can't take back. Taking back might be the only move. He does it, fair play. Bishop f2 looks good. The bishop's passive but hmm. I'm going to do it just to try and hold everything together. Because he doesn't have a dark squared bishop, so the e3 square is very safe. g3, you know, he could try and deflect the bishop, but of course we can just take with the pawn, or we can take with the queen even. If he tries to move like queen f7, then he just loses, because then rook d1, and, rook d8, sorry, and we win the bishop. Which is making this very useful that his king is on the h8 square rather than g8, which would be allowing the rook to come back to f8. In that scenario, if the rook moves, then we also have rook d8 to pin the queen to the king, which would be a problem for him. And if he moves his queen, then maybe rook d8 is also an idea if he moves the queen to the wrong square. Let's say queen g6, just for whatever reason, maybe we have this, but then he has checks on b1. That doesn't quite work. The idea is to attack the rook, but also attack the bishop. Very interesting. If he does go queen g6, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Um, queen c5 is interesting. Attacking the rook and attacking a7. And also keeping an eye on the bishop. That's not easy for him to try and defend. Okay, he moves the king. That might be quite a pragmatic move. To get rid of any ideas. I'm going to go queen c5 anyway, just to keep pressure on a lot of things. Also because I need to move quickly. I want to play g3, but I also don't, because then the light squares get massively weakened. But currently, my king could be experiencing some back rank problems, which isn't fun. If we could take a7, that'd be great. He may go a6. May go a6, which would be logical. Um, I feel like we have the pressure in this position. Rook to d6 looks nice. Okay, he goes queen f7. Ah, uh, that's not fun. That's not fun. We could go e4 though. Yeah, let's go e4. He could take on a2. Could take on a2, but then we take the rook, so we can't. So this is why the queen is useful on this square. If he goes for b6, though, we have to keep an eye on the bishop. Yeah, okay. b6. Queen e3, queen e2. Ugh. Queen a2 is annoying. That is very annoying. Hmm. It's a good move. It's a good move. What are we going to do against Queen A2? Hmm. <clears throat> 
Not ideal. Maybe queen b4 to defend b2 and attack f8. But then he can just go straight back. He can go straight back to f7 to defend the rook and attack the bishop. Yeah. Uh, maybe bishop d4. Put pressure on g7. The rook controls f1. Queen can't get in on any of these squares. The queen could come to f4. Queen could come to f4. But then queen e7 is a bit uncomfortable for black. Because we keep pressure on the rook. Attack a7. Attack g7. He could go queen f7 or rook f7. Let's say. Oh, okay, he's threatening mate now. Good move. Threatening mate. I think we have to go g3. Which is horrible because the queen can get in now. Oh no, is queen f3 losing? For us. Because too many things are under attack. Queen f3, rookie 1. I don't know. I don't know. My queen's a bit out of the game here. We're defending the dart square as well. Queen e7, rook f7. I think queen e5. I would have loved to go to this, but it doesn't work. We need to keep an eye on e4 because we need to block this bishop off because otherwise we will lose. And we keep pressure on g7. Mm, yeah, black is definitely in the driver's seat here. There's no bueno. No bueno. But I don't know whether he has a breakthrough. We need to stop him from having a breakthrough. <sighs> We had such a nice position, and I always seem to throw it. Always seem to throw it. Credit to my opponent, of course, because he's playing very well. And there's still chances for us to win. Opposite colored bishops, because it's not quite an endgame yet, because we still have a queen and a rook on the board. Take the queens and the rooks off, it's a dead draw. But with them on, there's checkmating chances for both sides. Maybe b4 is our next move. Just to try and stop a5. I don't know what Black does here, actually. I don't know what he does. I don't think he has much that he can do to progress. He can't go h5. He can't go something like g5. Um, if he tries to move the a pawn, then we just take. He tries to move the b pawn. We can't take with the queen, but maybe we can take here. <laughs> And any kind of discovery we'd take here, like discovery is trying to attack here, then we would take on e4 with check. We're no longer up a pawn, of course, because black won the a2 pawn, which is very frustrating. But he's also draining a lot of time here, which maybe we can try and swindle something. Although I, I wouldn't feel great about it. I'd, obviously, I'd love to play a move like rook f1, but that would be giving him checkmate. So. <coughs> Sorry about that. So that would not be good. Would not be good to blunder, mate. He's taking a long, long time, though. But I think it's because he doesn't have a way through. And he's trying to figure out a way through. If you play something like h5, queen h5... Okay, queen d3. What does that do? Don't know. Maybe queen d2? Queen 
Queen D2. Bishop F2. If Queen D2, Queen F7, Queen E1. Okay, but can we not just take on G4? Black has no threats, and we're also threatening mate. And we win a pawn. Queen d2, we just mate you. The rook could also be vulnerable. Rook f7 might be the only move. It's still not obvious how we would even push this. We might just have to go queen e2. But that seems like a mistake from him, for sure. I think trading queens might be the move. Because I, I don't know what else to do. Like, I feel like we're better, but we have no real way to make progress. We can't move the e-pawn, I don't think, because it opens his bishop up, and that's way too scary. <laughs> so trading queens is uh, simple, and maybe we can push the end game because the b6 and a7 pawns are weak, because they're on dark squares. You know, if you move this pawn, you lose this pawn. If you move this pawn, you lose this pawn. And we can put this pawn on e5 to be a constant fawn in black's side. Okay. Let's go rook to f2. Okay, he doesn't want to trade. Cool, 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 cool. Let's push e5. Go b4. I guess my bishop might be a bit overloaded. Maybe that's his idea. Oh, okay, that's interesting. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Let's start with rook f8. I want to try and bring my king in. All my pawns are on dark squares, which is very useful. Okay, let's bring the king. He could try and trade rooks here. But then he loses a7. And it might be a draw, but it might not. This looks slightly dubious. I don't know why he's bringing his king up like that. He comes to g4. Check. There. Whoa. Okay. That is ambitious. Didn't really consider that. Wait, h5 and we're threatening mate though. And he can't he 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 has to go rook f7, right? That's the only way to stop mate. Then if takes... Whoa, this is mate. Bro, there's no way he just blundered a mate like that. I'm... Rook, rook f7 was the only move. Rook f7 only move, right? Because you pin the rook to the king. G5 we take on Passant. And here, I wasn't sure whether e6 was the move to try and take over here, or whether I take. I don't know. I guess the game review will tell us, but wow. Like, we have absolutely swindled that. I, I literally said, like, we can try and swindle something here, and we did. Like, his king just got way too adventurous. There was absolutely no need. We're only at one pawn. In an opposite colored bishop position like that, that's always going to be a draw. Because you just blockade me on the light squares. His king went the complete wrong way, got himself into trouble. But yeah, a ton of mistakes made this game from both sides, I'm sure. So let's get into the game analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you've made it this far, stick around for the analysis. I would encourage you to. But also, if you're not subscribed already, then please subscribe if you have watched until the end, because then you get my videos recommended more often. I release content like this all the time, and hopefully you can continue to enjoy 
Anyway, let's get into it. All right, so let's get into the analysis here. Um, I had 75.1% accuracy. My opponent with 73.7. So really not that good from either side. <laughs> let's get into the uh, analysis. So of course, I'm not going to try and claim that this is a great opening for the white pieces because obviously it's not. But the entire point of this is to try and simulate the Karo Khan-esque position to try and explore Karo Khan ideas to be played with the black pieces in more serious games. So again, I'm not saying that 1c3 with white is good, I'm just saying it simulates a Karo Khan, which is the whole point. We have knight f3, again, trying to just stop e5, h6, knight bd2, c4 was better, but like, that's not really a Karo. Knight f6, e3, queen c2 was good, trying to prepare e4, I suppose. e5 is just straight up a mistake, and yeah, taking with the knight is better. The point is, if knight takes, I mean, if black plays a move like bishop d6, then we can just retreat, or we can play f4, and we just hold on to the pawn, or we can take the knight. Uh, we can do a bunch of things. We can also go knight df3. If he trades with us and tries to go knight g4, then I think knight f3, and like, yeah, we have the queen attacking d5, we have the queen potentially coming to d4, and black has no way of winning the pawn back, because if he goes queen e7, then we just take on d5. And he can't really go bishop e6, because we'll take on uh, b7. So c6 is the best he can do. And then we can just play a move like queen d4, keep holding on to the pawn, and we'd love to play h3 to try and kick the knight away. So I don't really know why I didn't play this. I took with the pawn, and I don't know why. My opponent goes knight g4. We go bishop b5, which is the best move. Bishop d7 is a blunder. Oh my god. I'm an idiot. I can just take. And no matter what he takes back with, we go h3 and the knight is trapped. <laughs> How did I miss this? The knight is just trapped because he, go because he played h6. He runs out of um, squares. And of course, uh, we control the f6 square. What a miss. What a miss. So, queen b3 is not the best move because of that. Opponent takes on e5. Okay, we're still better. Queen d5. Apparently taking here first was preferable. Knight e5, knight e5, queen d5. And, you know, if black does something like bishop b5, then we take on e5, followed by queen takes b5, and we emerge up a piece. So his best idea is just to go knight c6. And... We get a similar position to what we did in the game, except we're just a few tempo ahead, or like one or two. So we can go bishop c4, we can castle, or we just have a great position. I don't know why I didn't do this. Um, instead, we took on d5, which is still good. Bishop d6, I think, was a very practical option. And we go queen e4, which is the best move. So I was happy I found that, uh, for all the reasons I explained before. And uh, my opponent, you know, he can't do uh, bishop to e6 because we'll take on c6. If queen to e7, then we just trade queens. He could go queen f8, but then he can't castle. So he chooses bishop to e7, which is a concession, of course. We castle, castle, bishop d3. So I didn't want to go rook d1 because I was scared of bishop to f5. And I was right to be scared of this. And my only move really is queen to a4. To defend the rook like this. And then bishop d7 is apparently the best move, which is kind of wild because this is just, it just looks bad for black, but maybe it's okay. Anyway, yeah, we go bishop d3, which is very good. We force f5, bishop c4 check. Queen c4 was apparently a bit more accurate with the idea of putting the bishop on e2. Or going e4 straight away. Ah, okay. That makes sense. And then I guess we put the bishop on e3. Bishop c4 is still good. Queen d5 is a mistake, though. Queen c2 is better. I should have been a bit more pragmatic here and just taken my extra pawn. Instead, my queen got into a lot of trouble. We go rook d1, rook d8. Bishop d2 is a blunder. Ah, because bishop c8, our only move, is queen b5 and then after a6 
if we go queen b3, then knight a5, and we can't go to the a4 square to defend the bishop because the queen controls that square. And if we go to, um, after a6, if we go to a4, then just b5 and we get forked. Very stupid from me. Instead, I should have gone bishop to e2 to get my bishop out of the way. And then if bishop c8, then just something like queen b3 and I'm okay. I just got myself into unnecessary trouble. My opponent didn't take advantage of it. I was worried about rook f6. But apparently I just go bishop e2. And if bishop e6. Then queen b5. And ah, b7 hangs. So you don't have this idea anymore. You went bishop e6. Fortunately for me. We go bishop to e1. Which is not the best move. Queen h5 is also not good. Because f4 was better. I was just going to go e4. I thought this was fine. Bishop g4. Bishop e2. Knight e5. Okay, this is a weird line. And if I take, then you take. And I can't give this check because the queen controls that square, so I'm just losing a piece. Okay, misses from both of us. I was on very low time, though, so I can't be too mad. Bishop e2 is the best move. Here, oh, he can take on h2, because then he wins e2. But then we probably just go queen f3, and it's just e4, really. Oh, he can take on b2, actually. So rook d2 is better. I have to move like queen a6. Nah, we just play normal moves, and we're okay. But, okay, he goes bishop c8. We drop the queen to c4. h3 was better. Trying to get rid of any ideas of bishop take. Wait, what? Ah. Because if bishop h2, then we have the knight h2. And after queen e2, we're okay. But only if we find rook d2. Which, okay, maybe I do find here. And then we still maintain our pawn advantage after this. And rook d8. Bishop e1, and we're okay. Okay, we go queen c4. Knight e7 is a mistake. g5 is better, but g5 is a tough move to play. That's a very difficult move to play. So he goes knight e7, which allows knight e5. g3 was also good. Knight e5 is a good move because our queen defends the bishop, and our knight is threatening things and also blocking this diagonal. So he plays the only good move, which is queen to e8. And f4 is the best move, so I'm very happy I found this, because it's a very complicated position on low time. The issue is, if I play a move like knight f3, I assume he just goes back. It's not necessarily the best move, but he can just go back, right? So basically, I need to find the move after this continuation, and f4 is the best move. So we do that straight away. Bishop e5, fe5, rook d1, rook d1. Wait, fe5 wasn't the best? Ah, rook d8 was better. Yeah, it was better. Because after queen d8, fe5, knight g6, then we can defend, I think. With queen d4, okay. And obviously you can't take because then I'm just winning. So after you move the queen, I can either take on a7 or go bishop to g3 or go rook to b1. And I'm good. Annoying to have missed that. But okay, we're still a little bit better. Knight c6. Queen c5 is not the best. Bishop g3 is better. Can you take? Queen c7 and black is lost. Knight g4. Rook d3. Looks a little flimsy, but I guess it all works out. We maintain a pawn up advantage. We maintain the bishop pair. Instead, what we did... Knight e5 is losing? It's losing to bishop h4? What? What's the threat? Let's say b6. Okay, then we take on c7. So... What if you defend? Uh, oh, the idea is rook to d8. I had this idea when I had the queen on c7, but this is the idea. 
So black has to play g5, and then after bishop to f2, it's a better version of the position. Crazy. Crazy. Queen c7 is not accurate, though. Knight g4. And I felt I had nothing better than to take. Take. So you can't take on e3, which was the little trap that I set, because after bishop f2, you have no way to attack this rook with your queen, and your queen's under attack, so the best you can do is retreat, and then bishop f3, and then it's game over, because I'm up a whole piece. So he, he's accurate, he takes, we go bishop f2 to defend, king h7, queen c5, I'm just trying to be very active here, queen f7, e4 is a bit of a mistake, okay, so bishop g3 was better, or bishop h4, I probably should find bishop g3. Because then we can put the bishop on f4, probably. Let's say black plays a nothing move, like a6. Oh, we can also push e4. Interesting. Interesting. We went e4, b6, and it's a clever move. Because my idea was you can't take because of takes, right? And the position is better for white. Unless black finds b6, which he does. We go queen d4, he takes on a2. We go queen b4. Queen back to f7. Black is better. Bishop d4, bishop a6. And the issue is that black is threatening queen b1, rook b... Sorry, queen f1, rook f1, and rook f1 mate. King h1 is the best move, trying to drop the bishop back to g1. I play g3, and this is completely losing after queen f3. Rook e1. Bishop f1 wins. Ah, bishop f1 wins because this is now a threat. But we both missed it. He goes bishop b7. And now I have queen e7, the only move. The only move to not lose. Because otherwise we lose this. And I can't move the bishop because then we get mated on f2. So queen e7. Again, we threaten a ton of things and we defend e4. Rook f7, best move, of course. We put the queen on e5, which is a blunder. Apparently, queen e6 or queen e8 are the only moves. I don't know what the difference is. After queen e5, queen d3 is a miss. Bishop a6 is best. And if we play a move like b4... Wait, why is this losing? Because of bishop to f1. But what's the difference if we play queen e6, bishop a6? And then we do something like b4. Okay, that doesn't work. We have to go c4. Or we have to go queen b3. So after bishop to f1, we have queen c2 defending. Wow. And I suppose, ah, the point of putting the queen on e8. The point of putting the queen on e8. This is where computer analysis is useful, by the way. The point of queen e8 is after bishop a6, queen a4, bishop f1, queen c2. So again, we find our way back to the c2 square is the whole idea. So queen e5 is a mistake, but queen d3 is a miss. We go queen e6, which I think is the only move. Yep, it's the only move in the position. Our opponent goes rook to f3, and now white is slightly better. He needed to put his queen back on f3, which is what I thought he was going to do. We took on g4. Black has to go rook f7, because otherwise he's going to get mated. So rook f7, and here I go queen e2. And I'm like, look, I just need to trade the queens now, because I have no other way to make progress. And that is the best idea. We trade, and it's a draw. It's a draw because it's opposite colored bishops, right? And after bishop a6, my best move is rook f2, and I know this. And I was thinking, if rook f2, king f2, this isn't over, because these pawns are very, very weak. Right? And the issue is, if my opponent plays a move like bishop to c4, he can never move this pawn, because this pawn falls, and he can never move this pawn, because this pawn falls. And the only way to stop that is to get his king all the way over, but then these pawns are an issue, and my king is also an issue. So I was thinking if he traded rooks, I could maybe try and squeeze some water out of this stone. He was rookie seven. Pragmatic. 
we go e5. Not necessarily the best move. Rook f4 was better. I did consider this, but I don't know. G5 spooked me a little bit. Kind of spooked me. And I can't really stay on g4. I'm completely losing after bishop to c8 or, or bishop to e2 or king to g6. So I was right to be spooked by that. So after g5, I have to go ah, anywhere on the f file. And then if black takes, then I give a check and then I win. Okay, let's give this check first. And then I win a7. And I guess black's pawns are quite weak. But it's, it's probably still a draw, to be honest. Even if I take here, I'm not sure. My king is really, really wrong there. Really vulnerable. And you can probably just you can probably just give me a check and then give me a check and then win b2, and then it's probably a, just a draw. Or win h2. So I go e5 to keep pawns on the board, keep his rook keep his rook glued to this pawn, and keep this pressure up, giving my rook access to the f file still. Bishop c4. We go b4. Not necessary, but we do it. B5. This is not a good move because of rook f8, which is the best move. The reason I went rook f8 is because I wanted to move the rook somewhere on the f file so that he couldn't go rook to f7. I wanted to keep this pressure on a7, and I wanted to move my rook so my king could get into the game. So rook f8 also stops king to g8. King g6, we go king f2, which is not the best idea. Rook d8 is better. I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> Quite honestly. If you can enlighten me in the comments, please do, but I don't really know why. Rook f7 is the move I expected here. To force a trade of rooks. And here again, I thought, this is probably a draw. Probably. But we are up two pawns. So maybe we can make something happen here. And black? Black has to be accurate to not lose. Now, usefully for black, is one pawn on b5 is controlling my two pawns on b4 and c3. If, for whatever reason, I'm able to do something like this, then maybe uh, let's just set up a very nice position for the white pieces here. Then maybe I can win. Okay, king to e4 is more accurate. Now I'm winning. Because uh, black can't allow me to have two passed pawns and an active king. Again, it's probably a draw because I'm obviously just giving myself free moves here. <laughs> but I, I, I can try and push it for a win. He goes king g5 though, and this confused me. I give a check with h4. He goes king g4, rook f4 check. And here I was expecting king to h5. And then I can bring the king up and then I can, you know, try and make some stuff happen. He goes king h3. And here I was like, what? Like. That looks like a very good move, but the king is kind of stranded. So we go h5, and we're threatening mate. And black either goes g5, which stops this. But of course, we can take like this, and then this threat remains. And after rook f7, oh, we just take it, of course. <laughs> but it's game over. Rook f7 is the only move. The only move. And there's a bunch of things white can do here, to be fair. Bishop a7 is the best. Because you can't take because of mate. So rook f4, pawn f4, king g4, king e3, king h5, f5. Maybe white can try and push. But also white could take here. And after bishop takes, we're going to lose the h5 pawn. But my idea was e6. And after bishop to e6, here, and then here, and then here, and then here. And may maybe I can push this. Big maybe. But after something like bishop to e3, a6, bishop f4, king g4, king e3. Uh, there's ways black can go wrong, but he also has to be accurate, right? And bishop e6 just blunders mate in one. So there we go. <laughs> like, this was not a very accurate game, in fairness. And my opponent played very well to get out of the opening to be not completely losing because. It was definitely a suspect opening. I didn't take advantage of it properly. We now know how I should have taken advantage of it. And I think it was a very interesting game nonetheless. The opposite color bishops in the like early end game was dead interesting, uh, in my opinion, because obviously it favors the attacking side. And my opponent was the attacking side for a long time. 
But that bishop a6, bishop f1 maneuver, it's difficult to spot. So you can't really blame him for missing it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you want to check out the previous episodes of this series, then the playlist will be somewhere on the screen right now. I'll see you in the next one.